Welcome, and thank you for joining us for this update on New Outlook for Windows. I'm Margie Clinton, Partner Group Product Manager, and I'll be joined later by Caitlin Hart, Principal Group Product Manager. As we have shared in previous sessions and forums, New Outlook is part of our modern Outlook promise that customers get a consistent and best-in-class version of Outlook on every platform. New Outlook's mission is to deliver that best-in-class Outlook experience on Windows with an agile code base and modern deployment that enables rich, responsive, reliable Outlook capabilities and innovations to meet the customer's needs today and for the coming decades. In this session, we are thrilled to share the progress over the last year and provide more clarity and information on what's coming up next for New Outlook for Windows. It has been an incredible year for New Outlook. Since we last spoke, we have continued heavy investments in performance improvements, released dozens of top feature requests brought forward from Classic Outlook, and published our adoption site and migration kit with other resources you need. We also graduated to general availability on August 1st. Everyone wants the new thing to be faster, and so do we. With our investment in performance, we can see the impact in telemetry. Most tenants will see performance and reliability improvements, According to our internal data, 95% of enterprise tenants are already seeing significantly faster boot times, and even more are seeing higher reliability as shown by lower crash ratios. A key investment is that performance evaluation is an automated part of every change. Any change that negatively impacts speed is automatically backed out and evaluated before it completes internal testing. Our performance focuses on reliability and consistent improvements in general responsiveness and core usage scenarios. This is a fundamental that will have continuous investment. We have a wide variety of customers with different needs. Starting in early 2024, we started to hear some organizations say that the only thing they were waiting for is for us to exit preview. In August, we graduated to general availability to support those customers in getting the full support that they are paying for and the ability to switch to new outlook. While new Outlook is in an opt-in state, we recently released a policy that a few hundred organizations have started to use to migrate either pilot groups or their whole tenant to the new experience. This policy and a wealth of further documentation is available on the new Outlook adoption site, including a migration kit, which has a variety of resources, videos, links to our end user and admin documentation, and much more. We continue to add to our support documentation. With every question we get, we are adding answers. And hopefully you can tell we are driven by your feedback. We heavily value the feedback we get from customers. We analyze the top themes and asks and use this in our planning. But we know this has not been very transparent to you. So now we also publish these issues in our feedback portal page where you can upvote your top issues and see responses to them. The feedback prompt when you switch back to classic for any reason is helpful. But don't forget, there is also an option under Help to submit feedback from within the experience. These are just a few of the top features that are available now, ranging from foundational investments like offline to specific needs around conditional formatting and attendance tracking improvements for meetings. And here's a sampling of capabilities that are in progress, again ranging from large investments like PST support to specific needs like show my teammates calendars and auto-reading emails with Narrator. As we look forward to what's coming in the journey to new Outlook, here's what you can expect next. We are currently in opt-in and are now looking to move to opt-out, where the toggle is on by default. For those users, they will automatically start in new Outlook, but still with the toggle available to switch back to classic as needed. Some organizations are already moving into this phase using the admin-driven migration tooling. We are looking at 2025 to begin opt-out for small, medium business subscriptions, and we are looking at 2026 for enterprise subscriptions. We are fully committed to providing customers with enterprise licenses at least 12 months notice before taking this step. During the coming year, we are expecting more organizations to be expanding their piloting and planning to move to a new outlook. During this phase, you are welcome to file DCRs and submit feedback both in-app and through your account teams. Next, Caitlin Hart will show you some exciting scenarios that are available now and a peek at what's coming next. Over to you, Caitlin. Thanks, Margie. Let's first walk through the experience of migrating to the new Outlook from the perspective of Sydney, who's an executive assistant. In the classic Outlook, she'll see a notification that she's going to be moved to the new experience, and this will be followed by automatically getting the new app installed 
and then landing in the new Outlook. On first boot, she'll be able to recognize a number of familiar experiences because we migrate the settings that she may have set up as much as possible. Of course, there are some new features that she'll want to explore, so we highly recommend checking out the settings and everything she can do only in the new experience. First, I see that my accounts are here, a PST that I had. There's also a shared mailbox for customer service and the executive Cora who I support delegates her mailbox to me. Both PST and shared mailboxes as accounts are upcoming on the roadmap. I can also go into settings and see my rules and I can now conditionally format messages to make things pop out in the inbox. The theme that I landed in looks a lot like the theme that I had in Classic Outlook, but I have new options here. I can generate a theme that is much more visually appealing or even use Copilot to create one. I'm located in New York, so let's do a New York-based theme. Now let's talk about the experience that Sydney will have using mail and getting things done more quickly. There are additional mail actions that are in the new experience that weren't in the classic. Popular ones are exclusive to new Outlook, pinning and snoozing, but she can also see familiar experiences that we brought forward. Flagging items to have due dates is one of them. She can also now view conflicts right in place with the meeting details pane so she can make quick decisions about how to RSVP for meetings. Right now, she's preparing for her manager, Cora, to go to a conference. In email, she has a detailed page of itinerary information that she's going to want to print out to have on hand. And with new improvements, she can now print faster. Everything I'm accustomed to doing with attachments works as expected. I can open this attachment directly in the app that I use for PDFs. I can also drag it to the desktop to save it. I also now have the ability to open a template file. So I'm onboarding a new employee, and I have a template that I use every time I do that. There are some handy additions to the Compose experience. Obviously, autocorrect and auto-capitalize are a core part of the editor experience. But things like suggested text for time zone translation make my day. Today, as I try to set up time with Billy, it automatically suggests his time zone because it knows that he's in London. And for the truly new and elevated experience, I can actually draft emails with Copilot with this sleek new drafting experience. Now let's move on to the calendar. I mentioned that I'm onboarding a new employee. So I'm going to add her to the team meeting series and make sure that she gets the invites. And I'll just send the updates to her so not everybody else gets annoying messages. I'm also going to schedule a new meeting for my busy executive that I support, Cora. And I can use the newly refreshed scheduling assistant to do that. New in the calendar, exclusive to New Outlook, I have options to be able to preserve declined meetings follow meetings where I will want to recap, but I won't plan to attend. And I can filter those out of my calendar view so I don't have as much noise, but I can get back to them if I want. If I'm creating a Teams meeting, I can also get directly to the settings to configure things like adding a co-organizer or preemptively set it to auto record. There are also experiences through places where I can see who else is in the office. Now I typically work in the New York City office, but I'm going to Chicago where my manager works. The other perspective we've been putting a lot of thought into is that of the IT administrators who are making this transition happen. As we talk to organizations who are beginning migrations, we are adding to the information and tooling we offer to address any questions and needs that come up. Usage data has been a popular request, and we're working on getting the new Outlook added to the Exchange email apps report. Check out the roadmap to follow for expected timing. We also continue to expand our offering of troubleshooting content available on learn.microsoft.com. We now have policies for organizations to pre-configure accounts and configure allowed domains. This is a major transition. We recognize that. So if you haven't started planning what it will look like in your organization, now is the time to start. There are three major stages to consider. Pre-migration, learning about the process, and the app and what it will bring to your organization. Migration, executing it efficiently to minimize disruption, and post-migration, ongoing learning from the process and everything you get in the new Outlook. As Margie mentioned, we have a migration kit and other content available on adoption.microsoft.com. And this is also a place to look for videos, admin documents, 
end user support documents, and more. For instance, here are a few handy links that you can use while planning your migration. This has been an exciting year with a lot of great work, and we expect 2025 to be even better. Please keep that feedback coming, and thank you.